Amnesia Rebirth? Oh, yeah, maybe in Amnesia Rebirth we had, uh... There were a lot of babies in that one, weren't there? I don't know, I don't really, uh, stream games with nudity. I tried to avoid it. Also, especially because I like to upload VODs to YouTube and stuff, I've heard some horror stories of people permanently losing monetization and whatnot. Uh, which would be suboptimal. It's got a maybe mage. Thank you very much for the 22 months. I don't have anything against it, per se. I, I don't really care. You can do whatever the fuck you like, chat. <laughs> YouTube has no room for nudity. They don't like it whatsoever. Right. But again, it's a little different for video game nudity. But, yeah. It is, um... It's also very cultural. Like, in some countries, nudity is a lot more relaxed than in other countries. Seems like, in general, it's a little more strict in the States. But, um... Obviously, Twitch and YouTube have different rules as far as those things go. Even Facebook at this point? Oh, I never use Facebook anymore. What's on Facebook, dude? Okay, we're getting there. Slowly filling in. Facebook feels a lot like MySpace to me now. I never use MySpace, but it's it's got a similar vibe, you know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do all of the dark carapace next. So we're gonna do the we're gonna do a full base coat on all of the dark purple para <laughs> par paracase? Really? Carapace. I can say words. I say carapace in every StarCraft cast featuring Zerk. How the fuck do I trip over my words now? Error case. there with the head scarapace anyways we'll probably do a second coat at least on the easy to reach areas so these areas are kind of tricky to reach Especially the little scales that are going around the site like this, like around the corner. Sorry, is that my head in the screen? I had to look around the corner, gamers. My eyeballs. My eyeballs can only reach so far.
Okay. So this is the sketchiest part of the carapace right over here. I don't even know if you can fucking see that thing, but there's right over here a little segment of carapace that I would like to paint next. I may have been better off painting this before painting in all of the tentacles with that purple wash, or that pink wash. Or I can try and not be an idiot and just don't smudge. It's a good alternative. I'm gonna take a smaller brush. Yeah, just don't fuck up, man. Just don't fuck up. Gonna take a smaller brush for it. I'm always a little hesitant using other brushes because it means that I have one more brush to clear. One, one more brush to clean, rather. So it takes, it takes about five seconds to clean a brush. Maybe, maybe up to 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna have to spend an additional, uh, an additional brush to clean, guys. I know, I know. Terrifying. Will I be streaming me playing 40k? Like the tabletop? No. Probably not. Maybe. Probably not, though. Yeah, yeah, I make it a one brush challenge, you know? Only do a single brush while painting. It seems to be uh, usually one brush or about three or four, but rarely two. Because <laughs> two means I had to use a smaller one. And that's just embarrassing. But once you've used a smaller one, you may as well use an even smaller one again. No, that's a bad mindset. You should probably just use the appropriate brush for what you're trying to do. But I do tend to uh, stick to the larger <laughs> brush whenever possible. Oh, this sucks to paint, though. I don't know if my hair is in the way all the time here, but... If it is, enjoy it. Please check for bald spots. Okay. It's not a very fun angle. Because <laughs> I have to kind of like I'm playing uh, like a... Like pool? I have to kind of like use the edge of the... <laughs> I should have probably never glued this fucker to the, to the base. He's already glued on there, so I'm not going to change it, but... Am I gonna apply highlights to this section too? That's the question. I need an angled brush? Right. Angled brush do exist actually. It's also kind of about keeping your eyeballs in focus though, which sounds weird, but when you have about seven layers of things to look through, Sometimes my eyes are like, oh, this is what you want to do? No, eyeballs! That's not what I wanted to do! Fucking eyeballs. Yo, have a good one, Kelstar. Take care. I need one of those dentist mirrors? <laughs> yes! That would help. Yeah, 
Did you get your airbrush sorted, by the way, Shiny? Or not yet? Just put the better lens on your eyeballs. I need to get the better brain, Ramble. That's what I really need. You're gonna go tomorrow? Ah, I see, I see. New Zerg unit. Oh, yeah, Lemon Dragon. Thank you very much. Welcome back. This is basically a new Zerg unit. It's beautiful. Just the way it is. It looks like a lurker. It looks like a lurker, ravager, infester. Whatever it is, really. It's hard to say. Could be anything. Could even be a roach. You've painted this model. Oh, nice. Did you glue it to the base before you painted it? <laughs> it's a psychophage? It is a psychophage. But it does definitely have a Zergy vibe. The Starcraft 3 unit, confirmed. I did not. You painted the base to look like a, reclama a reclamation nuclear waste, and you did a UV resin pour. Oh shit, dude. Programmer Kimbo or Akigo even using the fancy words. Very nice. I have to spend a little bit of time blocking in some easier colors. Uh, I definitely have diluted it a bit too much. It's probably okay. We'll have to do a second coat regardless. Let's just block all of this in. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't do a fancy base for this guy. I just... Um, I kind of just wanted to do a, a basic base for this one. I looked into a couple of them, but I decided, nah. I quite like the, uh, it's, it's a lot of empty space and I may add some little bits and pieces or something, but um, I think it's okay. We'll definitely add tufts and all that the super basic stuff. But I've done some more fancy bases lately, and I kind of feel like, uh... Any plans to paint an orc? I have not painted any of the fancy orc minis. I heard that there is such an event as Orktober. I have never heard of October before a couple days ago. Before about last week. I do like the term Orktober. I just don't have any orcs to paint. You painted Joff Rocker last year? Is that the guy with the guitar? There are some really cool orcs. I just don't have them. I don't really know if I want to buy another mini right now either. I've been spending enough money on uh, 
I was getting into the hobby and accidentally started collecting two armies. Ah, the classic. Yeah, I don't really want to be buying big boxes of miniatures. Because I know I'm not going to paint them. So I only have one mini. No, two minis actually. On my pile of shame right now. Two boxes. That's, that's not too bad, right? I'm just specifically painting minis that I like the look of. Any of the ones I'm painting, I actually want to paint. I feel like if I start army painting, at some point I'm like, Oh, I gotta do this fucking thing, but I don't want to paint this thing. And that's just gonna suck the joy straight out of it for me. This is not a contrast paint, no. So this, I have been using contrast paints for all my Tyranids so far. Um, I have been using Leviathan Purple mixed with a little bit of... What's it called? Um, I think Shyish Purple for the base coat on all the other Tyranids. And it works, but it does create a little bit of a splotchy effect. So when I first got my starter box of Warhammer, there were a couple of paints included, and this is one of them. So this is just Nagaroth Knight. This was one of the paints included with the starter box. Um, it came with like a couple of Space Marines and then a couple of little Tyranid guys. And I haven't really, nice, I haven't really used this paint. It's just been living on the shelf. I figured we need to go ahead and give it a try. Um, and so far it's quite nice. Yeah. So we're not using a contrast paint, which means that I can actually use multiple thin coats, you know, to try and create a little bit of a, uh, a cleaner look on all of the dark carapace before we shade all of it. I'm planning on using some non-oil on top of all of the purple. But if you do multiple layers of a contrast paint, it, it doesn't look right anymore. Like it, you know, since it's transparent, it just changes the entire look. So I think for big wide open spaces like this, I prefer using just good old regular acrylics like what I'm using right now. No! Fuck. I actually did that on purpose because I thought that's where my brush needed to go. Turns out it's not where it needed to go. I got a little bit of the shoulder. That's okay, we'll neaten that up later. A happy little accident, yeah. You will stand for Vallejo until the stars die. Vallejo doesn't seem to be as easy to get a hold on over here. Like, there's a lot of stores that sell them, but a lot of the stores sell the old models, like the old paints. I know they, they, they like, released a new, uh, a new range not too long ago. But I see a lot of stores that are still selling the old ones because they're going by the exact same name or something? I don't really understand. I'm a little confused as far as the Vallejo ranges go, but... Yeah, it seems like the different paint ranges are, like, availability and all that are much... It's, it's very location dependent. Not that the Vallejo paints are hard to get the, here, but it definitely... It's a little bit confusing, like the different ranges that they have, I don't really make any sense of it. I don't get what's going on there. Like, people say that the new game color range, for example, from Vallejo is awesome, but I can't find the fucking names of the paint somehow as easily. Because when you search the exact paint names, they sell like two paints under the exact same name from what I've gathered. And some of them are the new range and others are the old range. And other than like the sticker on the bottle, I don't know which one is the new one. I don't know. That, that immediately steers me away from a brand like that though, where I might accidentally end up buying the wrong range. Or like the old paints. Not that the old paints are bad, I'm sure, but... There's a lot of competition out there, right? I feel like confusing naming schemes do not really uh, make me want to buy it. But I do know a lot of people love Vallejo, yeah. <laughs> you can buy beginner sets that come with a couple of brushes and a basic stock of paints. Yeah. 
Oh, sorry, Uncle, I forgot. Have you have you any idea how one to start mini painting? Outside of Warhammer, I got the Monster Hunter tabletop and I don't know where to start in terms of paint and brushes. Um, I'm mostly familiar with Warhammer, if I'm being honest with you. I know there are some other brands out there that do also sell starter sets. So most people that paint are using tabletop miniatures, right? Like specific things that are meant to be for like war games and stuff. So I'm assuming any of the other war games out there also sell minis? The Warhammer starter sets are quite good. Uh, yeah, there's probably somebody in the chat that can give you more direct answer. Honestly, the Warhammer minis are really nice. The only downside they have is that they are quite pricey. But availability and like constant new releases and all that is all excellent. They just want your money! <laughs> you got some new Vallejo brushes recently, they're nice. Okay. Those are the synthetic ones, right? I saw that they uh, they released those. You see a miniature and a model in the same screen? I'm blushing, Brisek. You can't see, but... I just wanted to show my hair. I just wanted to show my hair. I want you to call me beautiful. Okay. It's lovely hair. <laughs> thanks, thanks guys. Fuck, finally man, I can't believe I had to fish this hard. Jeez. I'm streaming the bald spot. Hold up, bald spot. You sound kind of fucking jealous right now, don't you? Hmm? Buddy? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Painting miniatures! Smell. Alright, done. Fine, I'll do another coat. <sighs> what is color blocking, dude? I need larger brushes, man. For large areas like this, it would actually be nice to have an even larger brush. This sounds like a, uh, a theme park song. This is like you waiting in line to go down the roller coaster. Two hour cue music, yeah. <laughs> banger. Absolute banger. Ooh. 
Theme park music is usually quite good, though. We recently went to the Efteling chat. Yeah, it's new, Dylan. They added the new Twitch category. For models like yourself. For models that like to paint miniatures. That's what it's for, dude. Models and miniatures, yeah. Or miniatures and models, rather. You can only stream in this category if you have a micro... Uh, I mean a miniature... Uh, obsession. Let's call it that. Yeah, but they... Uh, they did give uh, mini painting its own category now, which is kind of neat. <laughs> this fucking emoji, man. The I love daddy emoji. <laughs> Can't believe Dylan used up the first emote slots on an I love daddy emoji set. <laughs> oh, it is beautiful. Wait, no, are these not your channel? No, they are your channels. Okay. They are beautiful. Low daddy when? I'm not a dad, dude. Maybe one day if I got kids. I have two cats, does that count? Aren't Milo and Toby my kids? I hate to tell you guys this, but I... I, I actually, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, no, I don't, this is gonna be awkward. I, I would have to explain it to you. I don't really want to talk about the birds and the bees right now, chat. We already talked about adult games earlier. It's a bit too much for one stream, maybe next time. Real kids make your head hurt? Mm. Have you guys seen Psycho in the chat, by the way? Last time Psycho tuned in, they turned in 1 million channel points. And I tried reaching out to them, but I haven't seen them on since. They turned in 1 million channel points for a Twitch chat emoji, which is pretty cool. They've been hiding in the shadows ever since, I think. Yeah, it's an ultimate flex, dude. Turn in a million channel points, then disappear. <laughs> Usually Psycho is a lurker, though. So maybe maybe I just missed their messages, I don't know. What's going on, Matt? We're in the new category, Matt! It's because I'm a model, and I paint miniatures. That's what it's for, right? I do a lot of modeling. <clears throat> Nobody else has realized it yet? Right. I wonder if it's better to stream in the art category, though. Because at least in the art category, there's a lot of people watching. The problem with streaming in the art category is that there's a lot of, like, um, <clears throat> mature content warnings when you go to that category. And maybe it's just, like, you know, to be surrounded by uh, mature content warnings in the overview page is a... I, I don't know. This is the appropriate category, it's just that not a lot of people know that it exists. The art category attracts a special audience. I already have a special audience. Very special. Very special. Thanks, Loco. No worries, Brusik. It was definitely a compliment. <laughs> no. 
Streamer called me special. There you go. <laughs> a special meets audience. No, that's not what I said. <sighs> Your needs are special too. That's why you've been subscribed for such a long time, program. Nothing else quite does it for you. <laughs> He's subscribed to this garbage because nothing else does it. Loco is worried about the content warnings. Loco also sends childs into the generator. There's nothing wrong with sending kids into the generator in the coal mines. That is something completely reasonable in a post-apocalyptic world, Mickey. Can't believe you keep holding this over my head. Yeah. Children are a, renew a renewable resource, but coal is not. And somehow I'm the bad guy? Okay, then. It's warm in there? That should, yeah, true. Loco was just looking out for the good of his people. Absolutely. And my Frostpunk runs have been successful, haven't they been? That you never hear anything about. in Frostpunk 2 I may have put all the people that were against me in a camp and then we put guards all over the camp to watch over them and make sure that they were not interacting with the rest of the city. Yes, we made them wear little badges to indicate who they were. Yes, we took away their children and sent them to the camps, but <clears throat> we were successful. The city survived. And that is worth something, too. Quick little second coat. And then I think we're gonna let it dry and we're gonna switch to some StarCraft. Made quite a bit of visual progress today, though. Yeah, my Frostpunk runs are a little fucked up. I will agree with you. Although I don't know if it's possible to run a non-fucked up Frostpunk playthrough though. Pretty sure that is the base mechanic of the game. I think if you play Frostpunk trying to please everybody, you always fail, right? I wonder. This violet would be a great color for your motorcycle. Nagaroth Knight is what the color is called. Nagaroth Knight. 
It is a really nice dark purple. It would take a lot if you want to airbrush your, uh, your motorcycle, but you could probably do it with like two pots. I mean, you can go for a lot of terrain with an airbrush, I'm not gonna lie. You can do it real quick too. I wonder how much actually you could spray paint with a, a single Citadel paint pot. Probably more than you realize, to be honest. Takes a long time with a brush, right. No, you definitely, that is an airbrush, airbrush job. There are very specific uh, airbrush paints, though, for, uh, for that sort of thing. Yeah, it is a really nice dark purple. Obviously, I will be highlighting it, so it's not gonna be this dark. We're gonna be shading it and highlighting it. So this is not gonna be the final color, but um, yeah, it is quite a nice color, I agree. Plus the coverage is pretty nice too. Some of the Citadel paints are not quite uh, this reliable. Nagaroth Knight, it gets to stay. How much does wrapping a motorcycle cost? It's not that much surface area, but still a lot of labor, I guess. My partner played Frostpunk perfect and all nice options and actually got an achievement for it? Really? Oh. Are you just flexing that your partner plays video games now? Is that what you're doing? Subtle. Okay, that's not that's not too bad program. Hey, Arumpus. Welcome. What up? You got two kids? Okay, that's also, uh... Got another partner flex? Holy shit, dude. Amazing. You're playing with our toys again? Yes. I'm painting my plastic soldiers. Although we're gonna do some Starcraft in a moment. I'm, uh, I'm gonna switch over in a, a little bit. I'm just doing my, uh, my purple base coat, the second layer. This is going pretty quick though. This brush is too small, man. I never really have a need for a larger brush than this. This is a size two. But uh, I could have done with a larger brush. I don't have a larger brush now. Mm, I don't think so, Dylan. <laughs> no, not a, not a size three. That's okay, that's okay. An airbrush would have been nicer, yeah. An airbrush would have saved a little bit of time here. But then again, if you want to use an airbrush, you would have to mask it. And the masking is gonna take time, plus you have to clean the airbrush too. Like, it's tempting to use the airbrush here, but I don't really think it would save me time. We just need a, a little bit of a larger brush. I mean, it didn't even take that long, to be honest, but. You painted yours with an airbrush and no masking? You do like paint? Okay, fair. So what do you do for the parts where you accidentally sprill over it? You just go over those again? 
Yeah, I guess she can be quite close and detailed. I haven't used the airbrush enough yet to really get to the bottom of where I can and cannot use it. But I think a brush here was totally reasonable, though. Yeah, exactly. I default to brush use every time. But I like brush painting. I <laughs> There's nothing against, uh, you know, I like I like brush painting. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. For tell the netball, you start going shiny. <laughs> I got coffee, chat. Huge! You painted this whole model by brush as well? It is kind of a nice model, yeah. I'm still not 100% convinced on the respirator situation as far as brushing goes, or, or, or uh, sorry, airbrushing goes. I feel like a lot of folks don't, and a lot of people do, and I can't quite figure out any reasonable logic. Shout out to LoGF for bringing coffee. Absolutely, yes. So I have like a stack of leftover masks from COVID, right? Those are quite convenient, I guess, for airbrushing. But I don't know if they do anything useful. <laughs> they might not be doing absolute jack shit. You went to a bourgeois... Bougie? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Coffee from some posh coffee shop that I would never ever go to normally. Oh, you want to? Ah, I see. You can make some really nice coffee at home, dude. Nice coffee at home is OP. It's one of the things that you crave after being isolated for seven months. Damn. Kinda nutty. We went to see um, the new Disney movie yesterday. I think it's Disney, actually, is it? I'm not even sure. The new animated music uh, movie? What's it called? The, the last robot or something? The, no. The Wild Robot. Supposedly it's not gonna come out until like a week from now, but for some reason in the Netherlands it's already playing. I don't understand. It says everywhere that it's not coming out for another, you know, while. Can recommend though, guys. We hadn't been to the cinema in quite, quite a while and we, we kind of wanted to go and we saw this movie was playing and we're like, you know what? I think it's meant to be a kid's movie, but whatever. It was really fun. Can recommend. There were literally five of us in the cinema. We went to... We, <laughs> we went to... Uh, when was this? It was like 1 p.m. yesterday. So 1 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. There was absolutely nobody. Yeah, streamer privileges, dude. Even in public releases, apparently. Insane. What are you guys talking about? Don't let other spray into your mouth? That seems like a very personal decision, Dylan.
This is what happens when you're not here, Selderic. This whole chat goes to shit. You left to go on your run and immediately they started talking about anime and hentai games. I was overwhelmed. Yo, Eli! My life for logo. Thank you very much, dude. You're out getting fitter and breathing the cold forest air? We get it, you guys have trees. What's a forest? We don't have those in the Netherlands. No, 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 we don't do trees. We import our oxygen. Oh, who's the tournament organizer for that one, Eldoras? Liu Li? I can definitely have a look, but I don't know who the tournament organizer for that one is. Don't you guys have pretty flowery fields? We do have flowery fields, yes. Now, sadly, I don't live close to uh, to any real nature place. It'd be nice, but... Uh, I would have to drive for it, you know? Like, back when I... Um, back before I moved, we lived pretty close to... Like, a forest. And I used to go running there quite a bit, but I... Uh, I'm a walker now. I'm no longer a runner, I'm a walker. No, I meant drive, I meant drive. I use my car a hell of a lot more than I uh, use my bicycle. <laughs> bicycle is nice though. They have cars in the Netherlands? No, I'm just kidding. We have no cars. It's either a horse-drawn carriage or a bicycle. If I walk out my back door and walk into the woods, it would have to walk about 17 days before seeing anyone. Bro, I feel like I could walk to Paris in 17 days. And I'm on the entire opposite side of the fucking country. Like, <laughs> I would have to... <laughs> I would have to go through the entirety of the Netherlands, then all of Belgium, and then a whole section of France. I'm pretty sure I could do it in 17 days. I'm not sure, but... I could... It Genuinely, it would be hard to get lost where I'm at, yes. Like, the Netherlands in general, it is... Uh... Like, I feel like if you're lost somewhere in the Netherlands, just pick any random direction and walk there for about 20 minutes. You will come across somebody else. Or at least, you know, some civilization. I don't think you can really be lost in the Netherlands. It's not really a thing. As a matter of fact, this used to be a common activity. I read about this in, uh, on Reddit recently and a lot of folks didn't believe it. I didn't realize it wasn't a thing around the world. We used to have these things in the Netherlands called droppings. I don't know if there's still a thing in other, like, if there's still a thing these days. Um, but literally the way this works is you drop off a bunch of kids in the middle of the forest or anywhere where they are unfamiliar without, like, any sort of, like, we didn't have phones back then, so I'm assuming you would have those, um, you would have those shut off in modern days. You would literally just drop people off, like, maybe... 15 kilometers from where they are familiar, and then you just have them go home. Yeah, the goal, it's, it was so much fun, dude. I loved this as a kid. The goal was just to walk back home and find your way back. Yeah, that was it. I'm not joking. Apparently this is not a thing in other countries, but this is definitely a thing in the Netherlands. Droppings. 
is where you drop off your kids and... Well, it's not really kids, it's like teenagers, I guess. It's something you do when you're like 14, 15, 16, something like that. Maybe I grew up in a safer time period or when people weren't so concerned, I'm not sure, but this was a very common thing when I was a kid. Yeah. This was something like specifically that like the church and whatnot would organize. I am not fucking with you guys. This is very real. No maps, no nothing. Like the idea was that you would find somebody and then go ask them and like, you know, hopefully get directions that way and then slowly find your way back. It's like a coming of age thing, kind of, yeah. Oh, actually, there's little uh, bits of plating over here, too. I guess it's not very much fun when everybody has Google Maps on their phone. <laughs> like, you get dropped off somewhere, you just, you know, follow the, the instructions on your screen. It's not, not nearly as enjoyable. I don't know if it's still common, George. I have no idea. Maybe it's no longer a thing. I'm gonna spill over a little bit, that's okay. Apparently there's a route from Amsterdam to Paris by foot. Estimated 51 days. Oh, okay. It's a little further than I realized. 51 days on foot to Paris? No way it's that long? I don't know. Walking's pretty slow, dude. Or cars are pretty fast. Your car isn't? Oh, okay. Didn't you say you lived in Germany? I feel like every car I see in Germany is like either a BMW or an Audi. <laughs> People drive fucking fast in Germany, dude. The Autobahn is a crazy place. Every time I go to Germany and I feel ambitious to drive a little bit quicker on the Autobahn, I go like 150 kilometers an hour or something. I'm like, oh my God, I'm zooming, dude. Maybe I push it to like 160, maybe even faster than that. That is like what? Um, maybe 100 miles an hour, something like that. And then I kid you not, you drive on the right lane, right? You drive on the right lane. And in Germany, when you're going like, say like 100 miles an hour, the guys will still just overtake you. Like, oh shit, sorry. That was me moving my arm forward. And apparently also the microphone with it. Anyways, they drive fast. People in Germany don't mess around. Ugh. Sorry, sorry. I moved my microphone on accident. Here's what I did. Here's what I did. I went like... That's, that's bad. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. I just wanted you guys to be prepared for Spooktober, okay? My stream is now a horror stream. I want you to have... I want you to have jump scares in the back of your mind. You should never know though when they're gonna hit you. Yeah, Germany, Germany in, the, uh, in some location on the Autobahn, they don't have a speed limit. You can go however fucking fast you want, it's insane. No speed limits. Not everywhere. But there are places where you can just drive. The right lane is for old people and trucks, the middle lane is for normal driving, and the left lane is for F1. Ah, okay. 
Dun 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 dun. Max Verstappen. From my brief experience in Germany, people that go 130 to 150 kilometers an hour are a minority. No, no, I think that's that's quite quite the norm. For those of you in Germany, what, how fast is like the average speed people do on the, the the autobahn whenever it's like relatively quiet, like when it's not traffic jams? I mean, people go pretty fast. Yeah, like 140, like 130, 150. Yeah. Yeah. The only downside is that whenever you do drive in Germany, there's about uh, every five seconds, there's some road works. So you drive for about maybe 10 minutes. There's going to be road works. And then you drive for another 10 minutes and there's going to be some more road works. And then there's some more road works. <laughs> There's always road work somehow. Yeah, instead of speed limits in Germany, they have road works everywhere. It's never finished either. It's always going. The Autobahn is pretty chill though. Germany has a recommended speed limit of 130 kilometers an hour. Yeah, but 130 kilometers an hour is a lot harder or a lot faster than a lot of speed limits in actual... Like, that's not even a speed limit. It's a speed suggestion. A speed limit suggestion. <laughs> uh, you mean the, the smoky bits? We're gonna make those smoky bits. That's the plan. Uh, I'm gonna use some contrast paints, I think, for that, and then maybe uh, either dry brush or like maybe put some highlights on it. I'm not trying to do a super clean paint job with this one. I mean, I still want to keep it relatively clean, of course, but I just actually spilled over a little bit. Yay, yay. Anyways. Um,